Getting settled in. Morning. Good morning. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Welcome to Valence Developer Diaries 13. And we're going to go over creating a document within Nitro App Builder. Um, this will be probably, we'll definitely be doing some coding in this uh, exercise. Um, <clears throat> Can you see my uh, screen, Sean? Yep. Okay, sweet. All right. I need to move this out of the way. Okay, so let's first talk about some things. If you are gonna watch this and then attempt to recreate it or do something with this later down the road, we request that you make sure you're at least on the latest 5.2 plus which during this session it is uh, 630 because there's some things in there that have been updated. Okay. So I want to just bring up one example right away is here's an, an app that we did in a previous session, but if you, aren't familiar, grids allow you to say automatically download to Excel or PDF. Um, this grid has that PDF. We are gonna be working with the same um, package that we use in Valence to create this PDF. And it is called PDF Make. And you can easily just go here and then there's documentation. You can, there's a playground which you can see like examples of what it does. Um, and just for reference, before we start getting into anything, I'm logged in this. It resides under oops, resources. So within your valence instance, resources, and then within resources, you'll see a folder called PDF Make. Okay, but that's just if outside of app builder, you wanted to use it, you could just go do, pull it down yourself, but we have it installed already. All right, let's, let's, let's get this party started. Okay, I'm gonna simply just create, quite quickly, I'm not gonna walk through example, like what, what we're doing here, but I'm just gonna create a data source going over Demo CMAS file, which is included in Valence. Um, let's see. Filter down to that. All right, we're just going to quickly create a grid off that. And <clears throat> I'm just going to, sure. We're not really worried about the look or anything. We just want to get in the meat of it. So I'm not going to add a download. It's paging. That's fine for now. So. Okay, now that we have our data source, our grid, we'll create the application and just bring in that simple, simple grid. Uh, example document. Okay, so within behaviors, we can we can you know add buttons uh, to do specific things. In this scenario, we're gonna to wanna to add a button to the grid itself. Um, I mean, we really wouldn't have to, I guess it, matter, it matters on your layout where you want it. You could have it on the section, you could have it on the app level. Um, I'm just gonna, for, I'll put it in the section. It doesn't really matter. So, oh, doc. Okay, now that we have this button, um, 
we have there's an option and, and this option is only available because we have it turned on in beta which is within uh, the portal admin settings and I know that in previous uh, sessions we've talked about that but I guess I could just quickly show that if you go into portal admin go into settings search for beta you want to the beta features enabled, you wanna make sure that's checked. So you'll see that. So on click, what do we wanna do? We wanna execute a script. So we're just saying now we're in writing our own JavaScript. <clears throat> so there's some methods and like this is beta, so we will have this documented for when we release um, Valent 6. Um, so we don't really, Right now, since they're beta features, we don't have documentation of these available, but I'm gonna just walk through. So the first thing we wanna do is, you know, our goal is to create a, a document, let's say a report, <clears throat> maybe somewhat similar what we what it does to out of the box today for the grid that just shows a, a table list of data. So I'm gonna just paste this in real quick. So there's this method that's called load PDF make. So that is loading back to the that is loading the PDF make which is I just shown on the IFS that's bringing that into our app okay the reason why we need to do that is because nab Nitro app builder when running won't load that unless it's needed it's it's a resource we don't just automatically always load because we you know you might not ever create a uh, download the PDF on a grid so we are not gonna load that if it's not needed so for example I'm gonna go into dev tools real quick for Chrome. So I'm gonna reload that customers, which has that download of PDF. If I do PDF make, it's not found. But when I click the download, sure current page. Now I do PDF make, it's available. So it's not gonna load that resource until it's requested. And then if it's requested again, the resource is already loaded, so it doesn't have to do it again. So that is the purpose of this method. This is saying, hey, I'm gonna be using PDF make, so I need to make sure you load it for me. And if it's already loaded, it'll come back. Um, it is a promise and they're structured. So once this is completed, it's either loaded the resources or it finds the resources already loaded it's gonna call the, your, the next function, which is success. Um, if there was an error, the second function would be called and the error information we pass to that. Okay. And I'm just gonna do, now we're not gonna go over like all the details of PDF make. They've, they've got you know, decent documentation, pretty good documentation. A playground, which you can see all different examples. Um, so you can do that after, you know, after watching this, but for example purposes, I'm just going to throw something very small in there just to see something in action. So now that it's loaded, I'm just going to use PDF make, which is global and based on their documentation, it's create PDF and then you pass the content of that PDF. This is very simple. It's just saying, hey, some text, and we're saying it's a header. And then after that, we're just going and saying, hey, let's download it. So very small and straightforward. Oh. Get this out of the way. Lost my save button. Okay. Save that. We're not doing anything with the widgets or anything. We just added that button. Let's just create this very quickly. Okay, and it should show. 
meine Kamera. Okay, here's our list, here's our button, I'm clicking it. It's running that script and you can see it just downloaded a file and there's our text. So it's a PDF document and there's the text. Very, you know, simple. Okay. Now what the goal is, we'll, 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 we want to create a list, a table of some of this data, let's say. Um, if we look, I went in the playground, this zoom thing is in the way. I can't move the zoom. There we go. Um, here in the playground, a really quick example of how it's set up for like a table, content, you're just passing table. Again, this is all in the documentation, but I just want to give you a high level, like easy way to see it. We pass the body. The first item in the body is going to be your table, the, the headers. And after that, it's just going to be whatever the data is, those rows. So you can see header one, two, three, and then each row. And then this is the output, header one, two, three, and those rows in the data. So we want to do something similar, but we want to use data from our grid. So I'm going to go back in here. And to start doing that, <clears throat> let's first add a widget, which is going to be a utility widget, and we're going to do the URL widget. Uh, I'm going to just call it doc. So this is so we can show the document that we create when they click the document in line. And I want to create an app variable, which is going to be called URL. This will be used to say that this is the data URL for that frame that we just created, the utility here. So when we create the PDF, we'll just set that app variable. And then in essence, this should change and show the document. And let's name uh, customer list because we'll need to reference this in behaviors. Okay, so we've named our list of customer lists. We have our, our uh, URL widget. Let's go back into the script. Okay, so I'm going to, I guess, you know what, before I do that, let me just show some other things. So here, I'm going to take this out. So we want to make sure we don't do anything until we've loaded. So we're going to stay in this, in this method, in the response. We have another method that's available, which is get widget data. In prior uh, developer sessions, uh, I think, Sean, we went over the get widget already based off the name. I don't, I don't, I don't remember if we did. Okay. Well, I'm going to go and remove it. And there's widgets right here. If I click, since we gave that name, widget a name of customer list, if I click it, it automatically pl places in get widget and then the name customer list. That's returning, that's gonna return the actual whole widget, okay? And then this new method of get widget data requires that you pass it the whole widget. So we can easily just do that by first calling get widget and you can just click that and it would insert it. If you don't have a name, Sean, I think it, what does it by widget ID? Yeah, it would still, you would still, you would see a number in there instead. Yeah. And then the problem with that would be is if you're moving these apps to um, exporting, importing to other um, instances, those widget IDs could change. So your script could be invalid if you're doing it by ID. So that we, we highly suggest always put a name on a widget. <clears throat> okay, so this is going to get the widget data, and once it returns, it's the same thing. It, it is a promise, so it's going to come back and call the first function if it's successful, the second if there's an error. Okay, and it's just going to return you all the data, in a, and it's going that date. It's going to be in an array, so array of rows of data, whatever that widget has. If that widget is a grid, 
and it's paging, it will go and get all the data for that widget. So you can generate if I, and we'll show that, but this customer list is paging by, I think page size is 25. When I get widget data for that widget, it's gonna go and get all the rest of the data and return it back to us. So first thing is, I think I wanna do is this function of errors repetitive. So I'm going to create a global function of failure. So this is just making it cleaner and easier to read. So instead of having a function with the same code over and over again, and I'm gonna explain why I have this right now. So this is, I wanna mask the screen. When they click this button, because I know that the load make, PDF make is pr really, really fast, but now that we're introducing Git widget data, it could be very fast. You could have a, a, not a paging grid, um, it already has all the local data, so it'll be instantaneous. However, if it's a paging grid, and based on the page <clears throat> number of pages, it could take a little bit of time to go and gather all that data and return back. So we wanna mask the screen so the users can't do anything, but they also know that the application is doing something. So we have this helper, which is called valence.common.util helper load mask, which will just mask the whole screen. If you wanted to, if you wanted the mask screen to have some text, you could pass a parameter in there. Um, is it a parameter? Or just right? It's just yep. Just okay. the first the first parameter is just string. So we'll pass creating document. So when this runs, we have this. I just put it in here. This we're creating this function of failure. We always want to destroy that mask so the the screen is unmasked, and then. For right now, we're just, I just put in a console error, console log, so that would be in the dev developer tools, but, and then calling success, because we always need to call success in here at the end. If there's a failure or whatever it is, just you always want to call success. <clears throat> yeah, so notice that the, the function up at the top, that uh, right above your line one, it passes in success. Success is right. actually a function that it passes in and that's how you tell it that you're done with all your processing is once you call success. Okay, so on fail, let's mask the screen. Some text in here so we can see it. Load PDF make. Okay, now that we have you PDF, know, what, You know what might be interesting to do is to, to change like change our file name on that of PDF make to see the failure happen. I assume that would change the file name. Yeah, so it can't actually load the file. You know, like if we, um, just to cause that failure, just just to drive point the home the point of. Right, of, of I guess the, when you say the file itself, what do you, what do you say? You like just rename it in source editor, just rename it to, you know, PDF make.xyz or something so it can't pull the file. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, if we have time. I'll do that at the end. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Um, okay. So we've, now we're, first thing you're doing is masking the screen, loading PDF make. If it's already loaded, it'll come back instantaneously. If not, it's loading it. <clears throat> The next thing we want to do is we want to get the data off the, off this widget. So um, get customer list data. And on success, I'm just gonna for right now I'm gonna console log data and then success. All success true. You got a typo there. You got to read. Oh, thank you. Okay, so now the only difference we should see is that I'm going to bring up the console. Oops, sorry. Okay. Okay. Oh, wrong one. I'm having. Right. 
Okay, this is a good example. So created the document, we did the mask, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't destroy it. So we still see that. So that's another good example. Um, but here is our, here's all of our data. So it's just it's showing, you know, we did council log that data. And here's all the customers that's in that list. So the original set of 25, and then it went through and got all the rest of them, which was a total of 208. So you can see that was 208. So we know right away we want to end that mask. Okay. So. All right. The next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we need to construct how PDF make wants this data. Um, and again, I'm not gonna go into like tons of detail on constructing it. You can, it can see it within the documentation in the playground. Um, it's set up as an object which contains um, content, which is an array, and then that content can have all of your information. So, and then again, I want to show this again. Con so we are, this is an object, right? There's content, it's an array. And then table is an identifier that they look for. And then table has a body. And I did comment this out because I wanted to show. So you can see these, this table with the three columns and the rows. If I remove this, you're gonna see it's a little different now. <clears throat> this is almost like in some of our old DD sessions, um, if you're in a grid, there's flux and width. So this asterisk is kind of like a flux. Auto just says, it's just gonna do based on whatever the largest width of either the value is for that column. And then this could change to be an actual pixel size if you wanted to. And I have some code, I have to type it. Okay. So here we're just creating an array, uh, a variable called report data and our II for our loop. So the first thing we want to do is that first row, I want to get some headers in there. So it's exactly the same as this. So that first row, we just hard coded header one, two, and three. Um, I just made the first column blank because that's going to be our customer name. So there's no need to put name, I guess. City, zip, and country. Okay. Then I'm going to add the rows, the actual rows now. And to do that, we're just looping through that data that came back. So when we did that council log, you could see it was, you know, 200 and something um, items in there. So we're gonna build the report data and then push it to the table body. So, and again, it's, it's, it's an array within, with arrays. So that's why it's being set that way. So I know that data.cname exists. We saw it in the council log, but I also know based on the data source we created and looking at the grid and selecting columns, it was called CNAME, CCity, CZIP. So we're just adding that. And then I want to add one more. Okay, and this is gonna be, this is how we're gonna create the actual document, which I showed earlier, but we're gonna do it a little differently. Okay, so we have that PDF make again, we're doing create PDF, we're passing the um, document definition, which I haven't set yet, so I need to set that. I'm gonna put that here. 
this document definition, I'm going to remove some stuff because this is going to be a little later on. Okay, so we're doing content, table, width, and then table body, but I'm going to put it below where we actually create it. So table body should be populated by here, by now. We've looped through all the data that was responded back from the data, uh, from the widget. And all we're doing is the same thing as in this playground. We have body, which is an array of arrays, and we have width. So doing the same thing. Now that we've created the PDF, now we have to do something with it. You could download it directly. Um, you could, what we're going to put it, we're going to put it in the iframe. <clears throat> so I'm going to set this data URL, which I already created. It's, this is the app var. So if I remove that, just to show, instead of copying, if I go to app vars URL, there's my get app var URL. Okay. We have a set app var now. I don't know. Is that new, Sean? The set app var? I don't remember. Uh, no, no, it's not. Okay. I mean, it, it says, it's as new as get app var. Okay. So there's a set app var similar to get app var, but you need, to, you need to pass a second parameter of what you want to set it to, right? So get app var is simple. It's just giving you, you just pass what app var do you want. It returns it, the value. This is saying, I want to set an app var, and what do you want to set the value to? We're saying we want to set the value to a data URL. So if we looked at the PDF, um, PDF make documentation, and I'll just do that real quick. So client side methods, um, there's create PDF and download. There's an open, I'm gonna go along where we're using data URL. We want that because that's gonna be the URL we're gonna then put directly on that iframe, which is our URL viewer widget. So think of a data URL as uh, it's base64 encoded data that is going to render in the screen. It's already predefined. There's no calls being made to a backend server. It's all set up in that URL. So we're setting that data URL that's given to us by PDF make. We're going to destroy the load mask and then uh, call success. And then the other thing we should do is we probably need to show this widget, I'm gonna make it. Make this thing initially hidden and closable. And did I link the app far already? No, I did not, good. Okay, so now we wanna link that URL. We have that URL uh, app variable, but we need to link it to the URL property of the URL widget itself. We're gonna pick URL, save. Let's see if we get any action. So now we shouldn't see that side panel, click document. Okay, so now we see that list, our header first, first header is blank, city zip and then here's all of our all of our rows so somewhat similar what's out of the box in valence with the download of pdf um but we're not using all the columns that's displayed or any of some of them you know like i'm not sure which one so uh state we're not showing state um this shows that you can create anything you don't you could in essence you can incorporate multiple uh, widgets data. I could say get widget data for A, B, and C, and then get, you know, loop through that data and then generate a report based off of three different widgets if you wanted to. Um, the other thing I wanted to show is getting an image. So let's put an image at the top of this, this document. And that's the last helper that we have that I want to go over. So I'm just gonna copy and replace all this so it's cleaner. Okay. 
we have another helper method, which is called get image. This will return you a data URL for an image. So we're saying, hey, this image exists in resources image is valence underscore logo, which it does. If we went to source editor, you'd be able to see it. So we need, we need actual the, the image data. So it'd be base64 data. So then we can embed it in the document itself. And when working with PDF make and wanting to put images, you'd see in the documentation, there's an image tag. And then we're just saying that image data that's returned from this method, just plop it right in there. And then we're giving it a set width. And then here, I just wanted to show that you, you know, here's some example hard coded text, and then we'll see our table. So let's save that. So this should look a little different. We should see a image and a header, but also see our row of column, column and rows. Okay, so here's our image, which was exists on the IFS. Um, that method pulled the image and then converted it to a base 64 data URL that we could then use to embed in the document itself. So, one more time. Okay, so now quick overview again, just so it's clear. So we have the load PDF make, which will load PDF make if it's not already been loaded. Once that happens, then we want to say get widget data, which is going to go and pull the data for a widget. And again, like in this example, it's a grid, but it could be paging. So even if it doesn't have all the data, it will go and get it for us and then return it. We're building this array, an object for PDF make. And then we're using get image, which is another method that you can use to pull an image, let's say off the IFS, which will then return the image data because PDF make requires you to have for that image. It can't just be simply a URL um, to pass in. And then we're just generating that PDF ending the load mask and calling success. Jenny, I wonder if it'd be helpful to just plop a debugger in here and, and we just step, step through step it. Step through it, yeah. Sure. Should be able to, yeah, I'll get on all those. It's a good idea. Okay, I'm gonna bring up developer tools for Chrome, reload the frame. I think for you know if, if for people who haven't used promise base uh style it it, it 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 is a bit confusing at first yeah um let me do this okay i'm just going to get it as high up as i can okay so our debugger hit <clears throat> and if we just start stepping so we're going to mask the screen and Which then we're going to go ahead. No, go on. Um, and then we're going to request that Nitrap Builder load PDF make. I'm just going to hit play. So we just got that call back that said, or, you know, that says that, hey, it's loaded. It, we either, it either loaded it for the first time or it already notices that or realized it is loaded. So there's nothing else to do and it calls it anyway. So you can keep on, you know. They can keep on hitting that document button over and over and over again. This is going to get that widget data. And I'm going to put a breakpoint within its that method. Hit play. Now we have that data. So now we can see here's our data. It's an array of all of our rows. So that's why we're doing the whole data. C name, C city. So if I start stepping, we're pushing our first item, which is just our headers. So now it has the, the header. 
And now we're going to loop through. I'm going to break here, but I'm going to play a little bit. So we're going to loop through. We have we initialize report data to be an empty array. We're pushing because we wanted it this way: name, city, zip, and country. So if I just push all those before I go any further, report data now has the values: name, city, zip, country. And now we'll at the last thing we have to do is we've got to add it to the table body. So, because right now, if you remember, table body just has the header. So, push that. Now, table body has the header plus our first row for the for the table, and it's going to loop through and do that as many times as it needs to, based on the number of records, which was or items, which is two hundred eight. Okay, now that we've. It's being funky. Now that we've done that, we want to get our we want to get our image. <clears throat> so we're just saying, what's the path to the image? And once Nitro App Builder gets it, it'll return the image data. We'll take a look at what that looks like. So I'm gonna hit play. We have it. That image data is base64 encoded, and it's just a data URL. So it's telling us that it's a PNG, and then here's all of the uh, the base 64 data for that PNG. Now we're creating the document definition for the report, which is, this is specific to PDF make. This is not like something that we just like created, I guess, you know, this is, has, doesn't have anything to do with valence at this point. So we've created that document definition. And now we take that definition, we're telling PDF make, I want you to create a PDF based off this document doc definition, which I want to see if I can. So it has, there's the doc definition. I'm not going to go well, the table is going to have a lot of, so body's going to have a ton of items, but. Okay. And the last thing is now that we've created this doc and it's returned it, what do we want to do with it? You could download it as we shown earlier. And in this scenario, we want to just get the data URL because we want to set it to our app variable of URL so that they can view it in line. So I'm going to hit play. So now that data URL, <coughs> similar to the image, right? It's a data URL. However, its type is application PDF and the base 64 data is after that type. We set that, we destroy the mask, and then we call success. And there it is. That's pretty much it, unless we have questions. I mean, there's a lot you can do with this. This is the, the very simple high level, uh, you know, an image, some text, and a table. Um, but you can create lots of different, you know, Many tables, if you wanted to, uh, paragraphs, it could be, you know, I guess, however you want to design it. So, I don't know, Sean, unless you can think of anything else, that's, that's what uh, I'm I, the only thing I could think of is, is just, just to reiterate that. It's, so if anything were to go wrong there, that's when your failure routine would have executed. Um, just to, yeah. And you know, the possible things that could have gone wrong there would have been, you know, you couldn't load PDF make or, um, you know, you gave a wrong image path. Yeah, let's see, I guess this would be a good test. I want to give it a wrong image path. Will it fail? I hope. This is beta. I just want to bring this up in case because I know that we had I set that failure to do a council log. <laughs> yep, there you go. So the failure did happen because it couldn't find it. Oh, and you can even see that it's trying to pull it and it failed. So we just passed the error event of what, you know, when it happened. So it called that. So there's a good example of that method being called 
the error being called because an error truly happened. And you can choose on how you want to handle that. If you're, if you go and get the image and it fails and you don't care, okay, then you can just, you could have just continued on. In our example, we just, if an error happened, we totally just get out. I'll bring that up one more time. So I'll remove that. So we always just say if an error happens, just end, destroy the mask and we're done. So, but there's a, yeah, there's a lot you could do with this for documents, reports. I don't see any questions. Okay. Let me save this. All right, well, if there's no questions, I'm going to say that, I guess, yeah, I'm done then. There's nothing left to go over in this one. So, all right, great. Well, thanks for everybody for joining us. This will be on our YouTube channel. Come in really quickly. Uh, I'm sorry, what was that, Sean? Sorry, right, something did come in really quick. Um, Greg was asking, so this really wouldn't be applicable to documents you already create by RPG program. Um, it, it would it would be applicable if you know if you felt the need that you know based on the, whatever you create with the RPG program. I'm sure this front end PDF make you could do a lot more with. Um, I'm, I'm speculating. So, but no, if you already have something you're happy with. You know, oh yeah, most definitely. If you already have something you're happy with, yeah, I, I think that this one you have a little bit more control. I feel like at least personally have more control. Um, we're already in. Um, you know, in within NAB, you know, we're, we already have our getting our feet wet with JavaScript, with our grid renders and everything. And I think it just becomes natural. We have, you know, uh, developers using NAB that are, you know, starting to get familiar with JavaScript. So it is kind of a natural move to be able to say, I want to just create the document and I can just create it all within NAB and not have to create anything else. But it's preference, I guess, too. Yeah. But yeah, for, for invoices, like you ask, Greg, yeah, that, that would, you know, it's a, it's a perfect, it's perfectly suited to that. Oh yes, most definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the way we're using it, I mean, this is going to get, this is getting, but the way we're using it, we're using it client side. So we're using it within the browser, right? Um, it could be used server side, but that would be, that would be a, a different d developer session of using node on the IBM I. So, um, and in that scenario, you could say, well, for let's say invoices, well, I can generate an invoice. Um, I want to be able to call it from my backend RPG program, but also maybe call it from the front end. So, you know, I might go that route of, if it was me personally, I would do note on the IBM I and then have that. But right for this demonstration, we're just doing it all by the client and the browser, just like we do for the grid widget when you, uh, request a, uh, PDF download. Yeah. So now you know. Now, now you understand more how that PDF download works. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. If there's no other questions, then I think that's good. Then, again, thanks for uh, coming. We are going to have this uploaded on our YouTube channel some point today, and uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. Everybody have a good weekend. Right. Bye. Bye.